Hey you, what is going on guys and welcome back to another video on my channel and today the topic is if traction control is faster on the new F1 23 game and if so how much or how much it is slower so we're gonna check out full traction control, no traction control and also medium traction control. I'm gonna test out for you guys what is the fastest method to drive on the F1 game. Also before we get into the actual topic of the video if you enjoy these and if you find them helpful, please leave a like, subscribe, it helps this channel out so so much. So thank you all for the support and now let's get into the action. So today the track that we are going to use is Canada because it's a shorter one and if there's a big difference we will spot it right away. So the first run is going to be without traction control, no warm up and I'm only going to have like one to three laps or attempts in total. And we are using the time trial world record setup on each run, just so it's the most consistent. And in previous games, I can already tell, the traction control did limit your lap time quite a lot, so I wouldn't be surprised if it does so again on the F1 23 game. Especially considering there is so much traction, so if there's a lot of traction that you can use, the traction control shouldn't be as important anymore. And I think most of you out there might have switched to medium or maybe completely off traction control this year because you feel like you can handle it. And in my opinion this is also the right way to do. Of course now there is going to be people saying, well Marcel, but you use TV cam, why don't you use cockpit cam? It's the same argument. No, I mean, driving assists, you can pick whatever camera you want, but with driving assists, like for example in eSports, it is not allowed to. And a real F1 car is definitely driving without ABS, traction control, so it's just a little bit more immersive. Of course, you could also say that about cockpit cam, but then again, we want an advantage and we are allowed to use it in eSports, that's why we do it. So the first lap is around a second slower than the world record, so 9.5. Then we are crossing the line for a 9.1, now we are on to my fastest lap on no traction control. This is actually the third attempt, you can see in the top left, lap 3, and uh, there is still, of course, lap time in there um, but yeah anyways this is how we are rocking it. and you can see in this area here we are actually we're having to be patient and you could see a small correction on the exit They're really tricky to get a power down in that section then also here we are getting a little bit loose right here just because we don't have the traction but if we get it right it is incredibly fast with our traction control same thing around the hairpin, always crucial of course to get the power down as early as possible. And we did a solid job, nothing special. Of course this is not going for a world record attempt. We are literally just trying to set a benchmark now and get this video done as quick and as reliant as possible. Because if we warm up more and more and more and more, I'm gonna become naturally faster. So also the medium traction control and no traction control run and uh, full traction control, it's of course, I'm gonna build up now on pace, so my lines will be a bit more accurate and a bit faster, my braking inputs will be better, so this is on medium now. And you can already tell by my face cam in the bottom right, out of turn two, like you can hear the engine bogging down. If I'm going on the power, you can see in my face, because the RPM, like what the traction control does, it just limits your RPM. And you can be as fast with medium traction control as you would be with no traction control. But that would mean you would need to go right at the limit and then you can already run it without traction control. So, you know what I mean? Like, once you over push and you would normally lose the car, the car is slowing down the RPM which loses you time but adds stability of course because if you have less power that means more stability. It's like driving a Fiat 500 on the F1 game, once you don't have traction anymore, basically. And this is how it works, so yeah. Um, no surprise that it's actually a bit slower. It's not as slow as I thought, but of course we can improve big time still. We had lots of mistakes on the other lap, and this one it wasn't perfect either. We're crossing the line. Also here, we are understeering. You're tending to understeer more, and it just feels a little bit weird. So yeah, um, I'm not a big fan of it and I think this should be the fastest or second fastest lap. It's another 0.2, yeah, 0.243 was um, with medium traction control the fastest and now we're going for full traction control. And the effect 
is even stronger. But I was surprised. I feel like actually, um, you can already see even out of the final corner before my first lap, I'm already shocked at how much it's lowering the RPM when going on throttle. And I can really push. Look at my throttle here. I'm really going aggressive. And you can see we are losing time and time and time. And I can't believe how much slower it is. But still, there's a lot of stability. And you can see in some sections where we lost traction and made a little error on our no traction control run. We are gaining big time actually with this here. Just because it's so easy to get the power down. And we see that especially now in the next chicane, the right left hander. Um, on the left hander where we had to correct. This is OP. Look. <laughs> we are gaining so much on the exit. But of course, with our traction control, we would gain even more. At the moment, we're actually going for a faster lap. We're purple in the middle sector. Um, we're going for a faster lap compared to our medium traction control run. But of course, like I'm not used to these. I would say the medium traction control is around three tenths slower in general compared to no traction control. Or maybe four tenths, depending on the track, of course. If it's really traction reliant, um, you can see in 9.1 that is already faster than our other run, and uh, then we cross the line for 0.4 because I was pushing the throttle more. The more you push the throttle, the slower you will get. So the less you activate that full traction control or the traction control assist, the faster you will go. Like the more you affect it. Oh, sorry, sorry. What did I say? I mean, the the more you trigger the assist to kick in the slower your lap time will be if that makes sense so in the end no traction control is definitely fastest it's probably between three to seven times from no traction control to full traction control and on the medium traction control it's probably a bit easier to stay faster and now at the moment we are back to no traction control you can already see we are improving big time in the first sector now I'm making mistakes and mistakes and mistakes like we could go for such a rapid lap already so probably like a point, point 0.6 or something like that which is a tenth of the world record if we nail everything together and here you can also see another moment but we barely lose time just because well it was so bad before and the no traction control just allows you to power slide on the throttle like you can l really control and here I forgot to downshift into third gear I don't know why but yeah, so, as a little final review, yes, no traction control is still faster. I would say 3 or 5 times compared to medium traction control. Medium traction control is a little bit faster and more consistent than full traction control, but full traction control is of course very, very easy to control for no matter what kind of level you are driving on. It's really good. If you just want to have a little bit of fun. Um, so yeah, use whatever you feel comfortable with. But if you want to go for lap time, you definitely should slowly turn off these traction control and assist settings. Um, we are also going to cover off the automatic gear and ABS and whatsoever. What is faster, what is slower. So you guys are well informed about all the assists. And uh, I will also make a tutorial on how to become more consistent at turning each assist off so you can stay tuned for that you know what to do subscribe um, but anyways I'm gonna leave you now with the outro in a second so yeah I hope you found this helpful and um, see you in the outro I hope you all enjoyed it if you did you know what to do and I will see you in the next video take care everyone you're Marcel peace